Hello everyone, welcome to another Monday movie, I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week we're going to be looking at how you can use the viewport background and how you can also use backgrounds in 3D Studio Max in order to really set the context for your renders. We're going to be looking at three different backgrounds. The first is a very simple uh, image background, typical photograph that most people are using. After that, we're going to be looking at a spherical background, so one that was based on an HDRI that was taken with a light probe. Then finally, we're going to be looking at an image background that doesn't necessarily create a setting for your object or for your scene, but instead it sets a context, which is a little bit more abstract. So let's take a look at each one of these in order. So I've opened up my material editor here, and I have some simple images and what we're going to do is we're going to apply them one at a time here in increasing degrees of complexity. So I'm going to go under uh, rendering and then I'm going to go to environment, hotkey 8, and you can see the background group right here. This is where you set your background parameters. So I'm going to click on use map and ordinarily if you were in this scenario you would click on none, open up a bitmap, select one and then drag it into your material editor just like this and you would want it to be an instance so click OK. Now what this has done is applied this image as the background to to my render so let's go ahead and take a render and see what it looks like. You'll notice though that there's a problem right the background image is being reflected onto this object exactly the same way as it's being projected onto the screen. That's why the mountain range cuts perfectly through this reflective teapot. It's not transparent, it's reflective. So, we'll fix that in just a second. For now though, let's figure out how to get this background image into our viewport. I'm going to go up to Views, and under Viewport Background, I'm going to click on Viewport Background. And there are two checkboxes on here that you need to check in order to have your background from the environments and effects panel show up in the viewport. The first is use environment background and the second is display background. And if you need to you could also select which viewport you want it in. But I'm just going to click OK. And now just like my render you can see that image that we're using as the background here in the viewport. It's very convenient. It's static though so it doesn't move around. So let's take a look at the next image which will actually repair the reflection problems that we were having with the last render. I'm going to click drag this second image into my environment map slot and click OK. So the problem with this one is you can see that it's got some distortion. Because this is a light probe we need to tell 3D Studio Max that it needs to be mapped in a spherical way. So we're going to select that map and because it's an instance it will affect both this preview and my viewport background. I'm going to click right here under environment, mapping, screen. I want a spherical environment. And when I do that you see it snap into something more realistic right here. And I can control the direction so to speak that we're looking by changing the offset and you can see me I'm just clicking through and I'm panning around this spherical environment but if I dolly around my object it doesn't change. Let's take a render. So you can see here that the reflection on the teapot is different from the background behind it and that's because this background spans 360 degrees in all directions around this teapot and this applies to any direction that I look at this teapot. So in this way we've created a much more convincing background. So for our final technique let's look at how we can use the background to set a mood for our render. Suppose that you're lining up a product shot or you're getting ready to submit a speed modeling uh, final render to a competition. Well we don't necessarily need to render against a static background like like this cloudscape, right? we can actually do something a little bit more creative, a little more artistic. So I've actually grabbed this image uh, off the web. It's just a, a grungy paper background. I'm going to click and drag it over here. 
And now you'll notice that it doesn't really set a static setting for this object. Instead, what it does is it sets a mood. So this looks like a, a postcard and I could decorate it as such. I could put in a background, I could put a fake stamp in Photoshop and post, I could put my return address and this would be my entry. And when you put this kind of work into a speed modeling entry or really into any kind of a render, that's when you get the really great results. That's when you feel that this object is put into a context, not into a mountain range, not into a, an HDRI lit studio setup, but instead it's put into a more artistic perspective. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday Movie. You can find all of my Monday movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads at my website, www.mrbluesummers.com.